Good evening, welcome to Zion. Thanks for joining us in person and online. Today observes Ash Wednesday, and on this day we begin our 40-day journey toward Easter with a day of fasting and repentance. Marking our foreheads with dust, we acknowledge that we die and return to the earth, and at the same time the dust traces the life-giving cross indelibly marked on our foreheads at baptism. A link to our worship bulletin is online on the web page, and now I ask those present Please stand as you're able as we begin our worship with the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order for them, in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. May your word be my word, and may the thoughts and meditation of our minds and hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We will hear it spoken again and again. In fact, I have already been saying it as people have driven up in cars to receive their ashes said to each person as a cross of ashes is made on the forehead of women, men, children, young and old and in between, a reminder of our earthly mortality. Most of us these days don't need reminders of our mortality. We've seen the news. So many people who have died from this pandemic, refrigerated semi-trailers to hold the bodies Funeral homes backlogged in some parts of the country. The recent anniversary of the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas in nearby Parkland. The events still haunting so many lives. Others, our neighbors, where we live, those where we work, those where we worship, their lives ended by various causes. Old age, shootings, disease, careless and reckless and distracted driving, some deaths closer to home, family members, friends, their presence among us sorely missed. And on a much less significant part, I know that when I look in a mirror that I am mortal. If that doesn't work, the stiffened muscles, the aches and pains, the hair growing where it's never grown before reminds me that I'm getting older and getting closer. No, we don't need reminders of death. And yet somehow we often do need reminders that life is fragile, that it's precious. Those people and those things that we may take for granted as if they are going to be there always. As I burned palms from last year that had been fashioned into crosses that weren't given out because of COVID, weren't distributed as they were intended to, 
I watched them consumed by flame, transformed from palm fronds to ash. Ashes that had been waved last Palm Sunday. Ashes that represented palms that were waved with shouts of Hosanna as Jesus triumphantly entered Jerusalem, coming with all the hopes and the promises of a Messiah to set the people free. And all of that was an ash. Some of our hopes, our promises, our dreams can become losses, never realized or ending before we are ready to accept them. There's an old song by the band Kansas that is sort of an update of chapter one of the book of Ecclesiastes. They sang, I close my eyes, only for a moment and the moment's gone. All my dreams pass by before my eyes, a curiosity, dust in the wind. All they are is dust in the wind. Same old song, just a drop of water in an endless sea. All we do crumbles to the ground, though we refuse to see. Dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. You and I are commended to Almighty God a sheep of our Lord's fold, a sinner of his own redeeming, a flock that we become a part of in our baptism. And as pointed out by others, the cross that is made with ash on our foreheads, that cross was a device meant to torture and kill, not to save, far from it. And yet once Christ has died upon it and three days later has been raised, that empty cross means that after dying, there is rising. In fact, I told a young boy today when he received the ashes, when he asked, what does this mean? I told him the ash means death. The cross means death is not the final word. The final word is new life. That empty cross means after dying to our old selves, there is new life. And so we die each day alone, but with Christ. And we are raised up from that death, from what is past to a new life in Christ. And so yes, remember, you are dust and to dust you shall return. But what about in the meantime? As we are living in the already and not yet of our Christian faith. Jesus doesn't tell us not to practice piety. The Greek word that's used there means acts of mercy. He doesn't say don't do acts of mercy. I can't help thinking and linking the word piety with being pious, which, which has become a dirty word. To be called pious now is tainted, meaning someone who is hypocritically religious. That's thanks to hypocrites, both past and present. Good religious people, which if I'm not careful, I'm gonna fall into that category. To be pious or to practice piety, being religious or reverent was and is a good thing. It's hypocrisy that isn't. And Jesus warns about being reverent or giving alms or praying or fasting, not in obedience to God, but in recognition of others as the problem. That puts an obstacle in the way of others in following Christ. And so that's why we need to be authentic when we do these things. When others recognize what we do and express gratitude, that's not a bad thing either. In fact, our doing something publicly might inspire someone else to serve God and others. It's when we do it for the recognition, that's when it's a slap in the face of God. Then it becomes image without substance. We are meant to do acts of devotion to God authentically, whether anyone recognizes it or not. A place I had worked 
would give out frequently an assignment to patients, especially patients that liked to be recognized, liked to be patted on the back, liked to be important. And that exercise was to do random acts of kindness without anyone seeing it. To do something nice for someone every day. And if they were seen, it didn't count. Then they'd have to do something else. So they had to be stealth about it. But that was a way to build selflessness. And doing the right thing, not for the recognition, but because it was the right thing. So let us do acts of mercy and charity because we are called by God to do them. Let us worship God and pray often with God because it builds our relationship with God and others in ourselves. Let us fast as we are able because it can unite us with those who have no choice but to fast and hunger because they don't have enough food. And that fasting may be a part of grieving or a time of spiritual need when we already feel empty. Let us go deeper into ourselves and deeper into our relationship with Jesus, our Messiah. Let us ask that God break our hearts open so that a clean heart can be created in us and a right spirit renewed. Eric Mathis points out that this season teaches us that if we hide all of our imperfections or shrug them off as just the way it is and just who we are, we cheapen the potential for personal and corporate renewal, restoration, and resurrection to who we can be. Now is the acceptable time. Let the old you die, that out of the ashes you may live. And to that may all God's people say, in Christ. Today with the whole church we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life and our life in Christ is renewed. 
We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Invite you as you're able to stand, kneel, or be seated for the confession of sin. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and thinking, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ serve us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulged appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is great. They stand.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. All who wish to receive ashes upon their forehead are now invited to come forward. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Remember your dust. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak, the dust you shall remember. and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, the dust you shall a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in the truth deep within me, the dust you shall remember. and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins, Patricia, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be pure as snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I will give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A troubled and broken heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Accomplish in us, O oh God, the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we pray. Hearing the call to return to the Lord, let us join the whole people of God in prayer for all who cry out in pain and in hope. Merciful Lord, where people ask, where is their God? Send your church. Equip us with compassion and boldness to listen to our neighbors. Make our speech and actions witness to your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, where the soil cries for rain, send relief. Restore depleted water tables and cleanse waterways around the world. Teach us to treasure all creation as you do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, where terror shouts, send peace. Deliver all from the threat of bloodshed and the trauma of violence. Reconcile nation with nation and neighbor with neighbor. Wash us in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Merciful Lord, where bellies rumble, send food. Bless Lutheran World Relief and all who work to ensure no one goes to bed hungry. Provide for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, including those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, when hearts and minds call for you, send faithful disciples. Walk with all who prepare for baptism. Uphold them with a community rooted in your word and nourished by bread and wine. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, where death stings, send comfort. Be with all who grieve in the midst of their sorrow and pain. Sustain their trust in the eternal life you give. Lord, in your mercy. To you, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we reflect on what our Lord has offered to us, his very self, and what we can offer to the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.